So we should just basically call this podcast Quit Quitting. Start quitting. Quitting. <laughs> Start quitting quitting. Yeah. So let's eat grandma. Let's eat grandma. Grandma. <laughs> Or will you help Jack? Oh no! <laughs> have you ever heard that one? That's going in the podcast. Uh, I already have hundreds, well, maybe like two fans that hate me now <laughs> because of some of my language. So you, you my fan some. is going to hate that one. My fan is going to hate that. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, so not so. Stop quitting, quitting. Wait, start, start quitting, quitting. Or just quit quitting. <laughs> That's the very first thing I said. I know. Bring you, bring you value is our vow and our philosophy. The sales wolves hustle hard, it's our policy. We create economies, for crushing anomalies. Came in this world to dominate with no apologies. Got it, got it, get it till the day that we Sales Wolves Podcast. Welcome to the Sales Wolves Podcast. <laughs> every time. You can start the fire. The exact same thing Clap every time. <laughs> it's like my LeBron James are like. <laughs> All right. So this is episode 27. I am Tyler Harris. And who are you? The whole world knows. <laughs> the whole world will know. The whole world of one. Uh, Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Oh! Uh, Uh, this is, is episode. Recording? It is recording. Steven we Spielberg. are recording. This is live. Right. Steven Spielberg said we're live. Steven Spielberg, we're live. This is episode 27. The title of this podcast is You Need to Quit Quitting. Start quitting. Quitting. Quit quitting. Quit. Don't quit. That's the topic of this, <laughs> this episode. But quit quitting. <laughs> <laughs> So, we're going to quit quitting and get right into it. <laughs> well, why do we do this podcast? Number one, to provide just appreciation for salespeople. Yeah. Um, now more than ever, I, I, I've, lately I've been coming to this realization of salespeople need appreciation more than anyone because it's a, it's a tough, lonely, lonely tough. especially yeah. if you're on the road. They yeah. need more words of affirmation, which is what we want to do. Is we just want to tell you we are we appreciate and respect the hell out of any salesperson, no matter what you sell, who you sell for, why you sell it, um, because it is an admirable thing that you're doing, and it's such an important uh, job. And so we just want you guys to know that. And number two is to be able to actually provide some tactical, yeah. uh, real things that you can put into use and that may benefit you. In sales, but also more importantly, just in your everyday life. So that's why we do it. And the, being a salesperson, man, a lot of people don't understand what it's like mm -hmm. to face this phone right here mm -hmm. and to face the rejection on the other end of it. A lot of people don't understand that not only to face that rejection once, but over and over and over and over and it's hard mm -hmm. and it's easy to throw stones at salespeople or easy to be rude to them when you're sitting in your house and someone knocks on your front door or when your phone rings and and it's a salesperson on the other end and they're trying to sell you property somewhere or they're trying to sell you a, a timeshare somewhere Beach or property in Arizona Arizona baby <laughs> <laughs> I got so you know who told me that I, put, I posted something on <clears throat> on uh, Instagram one time and Sean Whalen I said something about you know, there's so many scams out there on Instagram and if you pay me $9.99 a month I'll tell you all about them and how to avoid them <laughs> <laughs> and, and then Sean Whalen posted in the comments he said uh, he said I've also got some beachfront property in Arizona <laughs> absolutely <laughs> 
and I'll throw in the Golden Gate for free. <laughs> <laughs> right? What yeah. is that, a country song or something? Yeah, so. <laughs> Dude, Sean Whalen's an ass kicker. He is. He's you awesome. know he's running for Congress or State Senate or something. Really? Yeah. I'd vote for him yeah. in a skinny freaking minute. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. He's a champion. He is. He hasn't shaved his beard. Actually, I actually had some conversations on Instagram with him this week on Monday. Did you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a cool guy. He is a neat guy, man. Well, and then... On top of that, to get in your car, to spend money that you hadn't made yet, mm -hmm. right? To to every dime as a salesperson, when you get paid on the sale, everything you're spending to get to the sale is like hoping that it comes back in, oh, yeah. right? Like people don't understand that. People don't. People don't. People get don't understand that. how hard it is to get out of your car sometimes. Oh my god! You pull up to somewhere and you're like, oh my, god, get out. Nope, get out. Get out, no. Just sitting in a parking lot, just doing meaningless tasks and making it sound important. So that well, you I've got to answer a few emails. Yeah. So I've oh, got yeah. to check it in. And then waking up the next morning and doing it all over again. Every that's, day. And that's where the respect level from us is just, it's, it's on a whole nother level because we've been there, we've succeeded, we've failed. Oh. Uh, we've done everything that we just talked about. <laughs> you know what's funny? Multiple times. <clears throat> Before he hit the camera rolling, we were talking about the Defiant Ones on the HBO mm -hmm. special. You haven't watched it yet, right? No, I haven't. So the story of Jimmy Iovine and, and uh, Dr. Dre, mm -hmm. along with ancillary, a lot of ancillary yeah. people. And man, I could not believe it. Like, your story and your hustle hard stuff and all of the, the ball busting hard work and everything that you've done here, and you've documented a lot of it. Mm -hmm. But I can honestly say that I, was, I wasn't that way. I wasn't that way. I wasn't mm -hmm. that way until after I learned from somebody work ethic. Yeah. Like your dad probably taught you work oh, yeah. ethic. And, and, but man, I tell you, like I got fired from a lot of jobs. Like mm -hmm. he, Jimmy Iovine was talking about how many jobs he got fired from. He got, he got fired from sweeping floors. Like how do you get fired from sweeping <laughs> floors? You know what I'm saying? And, and you know who he learned work ethic from? Bruce Springsteen. Hmm. When he was working with Bruce Springsteen, he said, he said that, that he almost quit because he couldn't take it anymore. Because wow. they would, Bruce Springsteen would do it again, Practice. do it again, do it again, and 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 it was twenty four seven. Hmm. And every person after Bruce Springsteen that worked with Jimmy Iovine said he was unstoppable and never stopped. He would, he would, he, he was the one that was always again, 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 yeah. again. He would outwork everybody. His wife said that he would, he would sit in the bathroom, and and make phone calls and when he was trying to get this one thing accomplished. Like he literally stayed in there for weeks. Huh. Had food brought to him, and he was just on the phone trying to get this thing done. Like unbelievable. Wow. I was sitting there going, "Oh man, I can relate to that." But mm. but I remember screwing off and being scared to get out oh, of my yeah. car, and being scared to to walk up to the door, being scared to make a phone call, being scared, mm -hmm. and failing, failing miserably, getting fired from a lot of these places, spending you know? more time pretending like you're working than actually yeah working. That and spending God. energy and trying to make it look as though you did something when you did nothing. Man, that was awesome. I've been there. I've been there. So. so we've got two big pillars here that we want to talk about when it comes to this this concept of quitting, quitting, because that's really the only thing you need to quit. It's just, you need to quit quitting if you're going to be successful, yep. if you want to last. Success is largely based on just the person that doesn't let go when everyone else has. That's right. It's the person that hangs on and endures. Yep. Um, and so the first one we want to talk about is the fact that you have everything you need. I think the biggest thing that we see with salespeople, just with people in general, is they think that they're lacking something that 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 they don't have what it takes to do whatever you have and they look at every a lot of times exactly like oh my company doesn't supply me the right tools i don't have this or mm -hmm. if, if i only had this product at this price i'd be able to make it yeah absolutely and people hear that right now they're making that excuse now give it you don't understand my situation mm -hmm. i don't give a damn about your situation yeah. now we're gonna be tough on you yeah because you have to realize you have every single thing you need to make it now yep and so a lot of this has to do with self-awareness, which is a big topic that we always, always discuss on these podcasts. And it's figuring out what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are. But the goal in that is you have to stop hating yourself for the things that you don't have and start done. loving yourself for the things that you do. When you go through that journey of creating a heightened level of self-awareness and really discovering who you really, really are, it's not about anything other than celebrating those things that you are. It has nothing to do with focusing on the weaknesses. It has nothing to do with 
now all of a sudden thinking you have to overcompensate and learn and get better at all these things that you're not good at naturally. Right. It's about going all in and tripling down on the things that you're actually good at. 100%. Um, so that's the big thing. Uh, and with that, and knowing and getting this understanding of, of, of I have everything I need is then just quit thinking about it. Yep. Quit pondering. Quit quit coming up with all these reasons why you can't go do it. Just That's exactly right. Just go do it. Go execute. And people spend so much time trying to mitigate their faults mm -hmm. instead of going all in, like you said, on their strengths. And if they would just get become aware of what those strengths are, if they would just go, okay, I'm really good at this. I'm going to absolutely tear. I'm going to do this mm -hmm. right here. And I didn't know if you saw my note already. I did. Thanks. Did you? You're Appreciate welcome. that. To you too, Steven Spielberg. <laughs> and so, if you can't come up with some comedy every now and then, come on. <laughs> but there will always be reasons not to start. There will yep. always be reasons why you can't do something. There will always be obstacles. And the key to this is, I was I was hearing, I'm trying to think who I was listening to the other day. It was probably me. <laughs> it, I can't think of who it was. It's probably Gary Vanderchuk. Probably. But, but they were talking about mistakes in that you get to a certain level in your career where you, you become focused on how many mistakes can I possibly make? Yeah. How many st mistakes can I go out uh, and, and experience? Because the reality is they're gonna be there. And so it becomes, it becomes just your natural flow of operation is I'm gonna go out and execute knowing that there will be mistakes, knowing that there will be obstacles, but I'm still gonna go out and do it anyways because I've already, recognize that yeah. so many people get blocked this mental block of knowing that I can make a mistake there could be an obstacle there could be a problem so I got to figure all that out on the front end yep. there could be an objection so I got to figure out the my script answer. on how yeah. to respond to that and or, or take it a step further my boss needs to think Has of to a script, a script. Yeah. on how to overcome this objection that I just created up I just created that may come up or may not just yeah. go and do, and if it comes up, figure it out. Yeah. And there's the people that can just figure it out. Those are the people that are just, just you can't replace them. You cannot replace them. So, when you when you look at ha the fact that you've got everything you need, now it becomes this statement of every day we prove with our actions, actions, the difference between who we say we are and who we really are. If you know you've got everything you need, now you got to go prove it with your actions because we can do a whole other podcast and we've probably already talked about it before about actions speaking louder than words, but actions, it's the only thing that matters. It's the only thing yeah. that counts. And so Gary talks about this a lot. Do, do your actions match your ambitions? Because a lot of people talk about like, oh. Oh, I'm going to hit this, I'm going to hit this goal this year, or I'm going to make this much money this year, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to be a millionaire, yeah. or I'm going to have this or do that, but do their actions match those ambitions? I mean, we hear it all the time um, with people setting goals and, and you'll hear someone set a goal and you're like, hmm, how do, you plan, how do you plan on doing that based on what you've done? Because your actions aren't matching your ambitions. And it's a tough conversation to have with people because sometimes it's gonna take them modifying their amb ambitions based on what their actions are. That's right. Our goal is to be able to provide tools for you to be able to modify your actions to match where your ambitions yep. are. So um, when you're talking about when you're talking about action, and we get we have a, a following here in the Bible Belt in the South, and we hear a lot. Um, and I know you're you go to church, and and almost everybody in the South goes to church. I mean, everybody except for me. Um, <laughs> Tyler's conned me into it a couple times, but. <laughs> I still have to donate Wait a money. second, is this a church? <laughs> is this a church? Just come on. We're two or more. <laughs> but guess what? There's only one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm playing about that. But but one of my favorite one of my favorite verses in the Bible is the verse where it says that faith without works mm -hmm. is dead. So so when people people down here a lot say, well, you just got to have faith. You know, you just got to have faith. That's going to happen. Yeah. What what are you talking about? Like, what exactly does that mean? Can we not be tangible here? So what Tyler was just discussing with everybody is that action is actually, it's actually the big sub sandwich. It's the mm -hmm. buffet 
for faith, mm-hmm. right? So, if, so, so your ambitions. I have ambitions. I'm going to own a plane, mm-hmm. right? So, so do what? What's what's the plane going to be? How much does it cost? And do my actions now feed this ambition, which is my faith, mm-hmm. right? It's the same thing. Yeah, it is the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. And and. Are the actions feeding it a buffet, right? Mm -hmm. So am I actually putting in the work, right? Making the phone calls, um, uh, seeing the people, you know, uh, that I'm supposed to see to actually make that ambition or what I have faith in my future happen. Mm -hmm. And and so that's what a lot of people don't get is is they go, well, you know, I I did this and, you know, it just didn't work and... And, uh, but I have faith it's going to happen. Well, I promise you it ain't going to happen. I mm-hmm. promise you it's not going to happen if you don't line up a buffet of work, right, to just shovel in the mouth of faith or your ambitions, mm-hmm. right, whatever you want to do, your goals, your dreams, your, your ideal life, the ideal you. If you do not line the, the, the buffet of action up for that to eat, dead. Mm. Dead. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And you can get that from, I mean, that theme is not only in our Christian Bible, because mm-hmm. um, I'm a Christian, the same as Tyler, but it's throughout every religion. Mm-hmm. When it talks about faith, <clears throat> it never talks about sitting there and going... Blind faith. Yeah, there, right. I, that's not, that doesn't appear anywhere, mm-hmm. this blind faith. Right? You know, the, there was an interesting thing I read the other day. It talked about the opposite of faith. The opposite of faith is not... What did it say? The opposite of faith is not... It said the opposite of faith is is like no sight. The opposite of faith is not seeing, which I thought was interesting. It's not belief. It's the opposite of faith. Let me find it real quick because I don't want to. The opposite of faith is sight. Here's what it is. Exactly. The opposite of faith there, is sight. And so what it's saying there, which which it says, is that faith is a, is is a, is a substance of things unseen, unseen, hoped for, whatever. So so here's the thing. That's just it. If you can see, you're going to make... If, if your salary is $95,000 a year, I just want to put this out there. Yeah. So if your salary is $95,000 a year, and you know you've got $10,000 worth of work on the side that you're doing from your side business or whatever you got going on, and and having faith that you're going to make $105,000, that's not faith. Yep. You understand? That's sight. So you're walking by sight. You, you mm-hmm. see where that's going to come from. What Tyler's talking about is I can't see how how exactly I'm going to have that plane quite yet. I know a roundabout way I don't concrete see the money yet. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Mm-hmm. And so, so I'm walking by faith, but I have to line my buffet of action up that he's talking about so that it lines up with the faith. See, the person that walks and says, well, I'm going to make 105000 this year. That's my goal. That ain't a damn goal. That's what you're going to make. Mm-hmm. right? I don't care if it's 35. I don't care if it's 45. Yeah. I picked the number arbitrarily. Um, so does that make sense? So the opposite of faith is sight. Yeah. Because when you, can see, when you concrete see how your dream is going to come true, your dream's too small. It's not a dream, right? So that's and how so that what works. It, and so what it, the the first part of that was the opposite of faith is not doubt because that's what a lot of people right. say. Well, the opposite of faith is doubt. Mm-hmm. It, the opposite of faith is sight. And so what I had here, and this was a post I did a while back, it said. So if you think about that in the context of business, faith is believing in an audacious vision when you can't see it yet. Most True. importantly, we prove our faith by the level of work ethic we deploy towards that which is unseen. That's right. So that's how you prove your faith. Yep. Is by the work you put in towards something you cannot see, and that's that I think is super important. And so um, we can move on to the next topic, which is one of my favorite quotes of all time. Hang on, before you do it, yeah, yeah, because I wanted to touch on it. You said, "Stop hating yourself for everything you are and start loving yourself for everything mm-hmm. you are." So, a topic that I wanted to throw out there, just in this one, when it says, "Stop hating yourself for everything you are," here's the thing that people need to get really, really comfortable with is taking a look at themselves and loving themselves for the good, the bad, and the ugly, mm. right? Especially the bad and the ugly, right? So everybody has this stuff in them. And you're like, God, I can't believe I did this. I hate myself for this, or I hate myself. You know what? Why don't you just give yourself a break and love yourself? Because 
Only when I started loving myself, forgiving myself, was I actually able to love Tyler, to love Steven Spielberg over here, to love, <laughs> to love, to love J- Jason, to love people around me, mm-hmm. right? Because when you when when you love yourself, you're then able to love your neighbor, mm-hmm. and 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 it's a real key is to stop being self-loathing, mm-hmm. and to accept who you are on top of going all in on the things that we were talking about on your gifts as opposed to what you're not good at. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Anyway, I wanted to make sure I touched on that because that's super important for people to, because to, they got past stuff, they got whatever. Man, everybody's got a story. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got a story. It's almost like you have to develop a level of gratitude towards the bad stuff that you've had in your life. 100%. Because the gratitude towards it of, of thank God that happened to me or that I did that because if that had not happened, this now in the future, I would not see this way or this I would exactly not right. experience this way or this I would not appreciate yep. in that way. Um, so if you, can do, if, if you can not only love but actually develop gratitude to where you're actually grateful for that terrible, terrible, terrible thing, which is far easier said than done. Far but easier. if you can get there then you unlock levels of power that you've never that are, uns- exactly are right. unseen because because most people who have the way the depth right most people never see the mountaintop because they don't do what you just said mm. the gratitude for the mm-hmm. depth and i'm talking about awful shit right stuff that's yeah. happened to you legitimate terrible stuff or Maybe that you did kid, or that you did legitimate yeah. terrible stuff the de- and you're so ashamed the depths of that you'll unlock the height with gratitude for going through it and you mm-hmm. become a person of humility that can empathize with the person across the table when they're when they're experiencing anything close to the same thing there's so. an interesting parallel to that when you talk about um, that analogy of a bow and arrow and the further and longer you hold that bow back the farther it's going to fly, which is very interesting when you talk about being able to unlock those terrible, terrible, terrible things and being able to harness because every single, we've said this before, every single successful person has a painful story. The, the thing is they were able to use that pain to propel yep. them right. um, towards a place that the, the, it's almost like the best stories you hear. You hear all these multimillionaires, billionaires, they went through multiple bankruptcies, oh, yeah. multiple, almost Almost every single one, if not every single one, mm-hmm. has gone through at least two, three bankruptcies. And, and that's when you talk about that risk-reward, but, it, but it's you, they were able to use that to propel the next one and to propel Dude, the next one. Is there any way we can get a step stool for this thing right here? God. Yeah, I'm sure we can. I hang this off here, and I feel like a little kid, and I'm like hanging forward. <laughs> yeah. So, so the next topic, My real thighs quickly, aren't we're going to big as yours. They don't weigh me down in this chair. <laughs> God, <sighs> I do have large thighs. <laughs> it's a burden. It's a burden. So, one of my favorite quotes of all time, uh, Babe Ruth said, "It is hard to beat a person that never gives up." Too, that's it's hard great... to beat a person that never gives up, uh, and so that's probably the next, the, really the next, uh, the next step in this is number one, realize that you have everything you need. Yep. Just go do it. Just go do it. And then number two, when you go out and execute, and when you put in that action, just not to quit because if you just don't quit, you will succeed. Good stuff is gonna happen. Mm. Good stuff is gonna happen. God. The more glory, everybody's heard that. The harder the struggle, the more glorious the triumph. Mm-hmm. You just appreciate it more. I mean, because the struggle is what it is. It's a struggle, and you appreciate the triumph more. Yeah. Um, this is fascinating. <laughs> if you're going through hell, keep going. Oh, Winston Churchill. But I had I that quote Ezell. in there from uh, Roger as well, I which is Ezell. awesome. So he talked about when. We got to get Ezell over here on yeah, the podcast. Yeah, I know. Man. Big time. I've still never met him. Really? Yeah, because I wouldn't hear that. Oh, you were on on my phone. phone. Yeah, I was on the conference call by phone. What do you think he looks like? (sighs) Let's play that game. Oh, man. Come on. There is, you literally just set me up in the worst. Come on. What do you think he looks like? You heard him. I think that he is, uh, he's probably very tall and skinny. That's what I think in my head with gray hair. Tall, skinny, gray hair. Kind of looks like he plays golf. You know, that kind of... Um, he does not play golf, but check out. This <laughs> is a picture, picture of him. Tall, skinny, gray hair. 
Pretty not good. Bad, not bad. <laughs> but he said, he said, he said, distinguished looking. He said that everyone talks about when one door closes, another one opens. But what they don't tell you about is that it's hell in the hallway. It's hell and in the, the hallway. And the way he said that, the, it's hell in the hallway. Which you know, was when awesome. he said it, you know where the hell in the hallway was coming from? He has spent some time in the hallway. Mm-hmm. Man, I tell you, in, he was telling me a story, one of his losing it all stories, mm-hmm. when he had to move into his office. Mm. He had to move into his office when, after the savings and loan crisis, and he was left with hundreds of properties, and they were all upside down, and he had mm. to try to dig his way out of it. And uh, you want to know how many notes he defaulted onto the bank? Not one. Mm. He said he, he woke up in his office working. He went to bed working. That's all he did was work 24-7. And uh, so, but, but yeah, that's, that's a hallway right there, buddy. That's a hallway, and it is hell in he the was, hallway. He was living in the hallway. He was actually living in his hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Andy so, Frisella had the same story. When yeah. they got started with their supplement store, they were living on a, he always says, a pea-stained mattress in the back of the, in the, back of the, uh, in the, back of the store. Yeah. And sure. I remember when, he, when him and Gary, when we went and, and uh, met with them, uh, when they were talking on stage that night, and Gary was talking about how he, you know, he loves the struggle and loves that fight. Like He's like, secretly, I, I want to lose it all. That way I can just rise up like a phoenix. And he's like, he's like when they talk about the pea stain mattress, he's like, put me on that pea stain mattress again. And Andy's like, uh, he's like, I'm kind of good where I'm at. He's like, I don't really want to go Not back me. that. I don't want to yeah. go back that far. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I'll go back a little, but I don't want to go back Dude, all the way. When, when it's your story, you're like, hell yeah. no. No, please don't put me in that briar patch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but funny. the funny thing is, as I look back at my story, my personal story, I can see every single thing that happened. And, and at the time when it was happening, I felt like I was being rejected from something. But now looking back, I know that it was more, I was being redirected towards something better. Yeah. And that's, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. But but being able to have that perspective now on the pains that I went through and, and the failures that I went through and knowing that I am here doing what I'm doing now with this purpose because of those things. Yeah. That quote that I sent you guys, I, I'm not, I wouldn't be able to recite it because it's super long, but where he talks about the one thing he wishes each individual person is that you go through every pain, every hell. You go through times where you think that there's there's no possible chance and you go through them as soon and as early as possible because that is the only way that they will be able to figure out who can be successful the one that endures and yep. it, i think it was nietzsche it was a it was a nietzsche quote remember yeah. oh yeah um but it was a great one but um, i mean they're writing books now about this stuff about and we're getting ready to read one with the whole team here i can't remember the name or i would i would say what it is but it it's on failing as fast as you can like go out and try to fail yeah like this guy was so scared of failure and i just read a quick little clip on it like he would ask if it popped into his head he he determined i'm gonna ask i'm gonna ask for it Hmm. so what he did i mean like he was on an airplane and he was like can can i do the presentation with the seat belt and the thing in front of everybody Mm -hmm. like it scared him to death yeah he asked like and they said yes (laughs) (laughs) like there was all kinds of things just to just to see how many no's how many turn downs he could get i mean it's crazy, right? That if you went out every day trying to fail, mm-hmm. trying to see how many times you could get rejected, it would blow you away the success you would have. Hmm. I'm def- and what you would I'm learn succeeding from. in my marriage big time. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I keep on asking. I keep asking. I keep getting to know. <laughs> There was a video that you literally you are built and a handsome guy. And you just said that, and that's gonna hit. No, like, that is not like true. I, I like, am very successful in my life. <laughs> like, like fifty million women are gonna be nah. sending you messages now. Please don't. Please. Um, <laughs> no, I was I was watching this video the other Steven day. There's this guy. On the other hand, this guy. This guy um, was super broke had gone through the bankruptcy, was just in a terrible situation. He lived in Vegas, and he said he had a couple of people that he knew uh, that were extremely successful, but he knew that they knew other extremely successful sure. people. And so what he started doing was he started reaching out to these insanely wealthy people and just saying, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? What do you need? And they started telling him, like, hey, I, I need someone to do this. Well, this one guy who was multi, multi-millionaire told him, I need this certain kind of watch, and I need this many of them, and I need to get them to China. And he said, and I'll give you $10 million to make it happen. 
And so he finds out the manufacturer of these uh, watches or the guy that had these watches and he, he goes to that guy, he finds them, he sits down with them, he goes, I need this many of those watches and I have to get them to China. I'll give you $2 million for them. And the guy just laughs at him. He's like, huh. he's like, we're not even anywhere close. He's like, it would cost you $8 million for that. He goes, hmm, okay. He goes, well, how about four? And the guy goes, how about seven? He goes, how about six? He said, so I made $4 million that day. He's like more than, and he's talking in a big room, he's like more than any of you have ever made in a year, I made in one day because I was just willing to ask. God, Crazy, that's awesome. right? It's awesome. But it's hard to be the person that never gives up. So, so we talk about quit quitting and the whole topic of yeah, this yeah. podcast. That's no, what you gotta do. You just need quitting, to start quitting. quitting, quitting. Yeah, quit quitting. Quit quitting and start <laughs> quitting, quitting is the same thing. So you need to start Quitting, quitting. It's, it's analogous. It's a. It's <laughs> synonymous. It's. How do you it, say that? I don't know. Who knows? What am I? Just a mere podcast host. Host. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it, guys. At the end of the day, the ones that just hang on when everybody else yep. falls off are the when ones that are gonna are gonna succeed. And so, so that's our episode twenty-seven of the Sales Wolves podcast 27. on quit. Quitting, 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 start quitting, never quit quitting, quitting. Never quit quitting. Never. No, we have to start quit. <laughs> never quit. Never quitting. quit. Never quit quitting quitting. Ah, That's it. it never quit quitting quitting. Never That's quit. another way to say it. Never quit start quitting quitting. 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 So everybody, we need you to put hashtag never quit quitting quitting (laughs) when you share this podcast. And then hashtag what are they talking about? (laughs) What's going on? Hashtag these. But we appreciate you being on here. Like like we always say, we're not here to sell you anything. We're not here to, you know, put you into some funnel where you're gonna all of a sudden receive 10 emails a day to buy some ebook or something like that. Really, all you can do uh, to help us is to share this uh, video, share this podcast on iTunes. Make sure you've subscribed so that you can see when we release these on Sales Wolves Wednesdays. Uh, but that would mean the world to us to get this message out there Absolutely. Uh, so that more people can feel that appreciation and maybe learn a couple of things. Oh, yeah. With that, great. I am Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Uh, <laughs>